This is Gary Atencio with CNTV, and today we're in Boulder, Colorado. I'm here at the Pilates Center. Since 1990, they have been empowering you to transform your health and get back to life. I'm here with Rachel Taylor Siegel. Thanks so much for joining us here today. Let's start off a little bit about yourself. You, sister, family business, new location here. Um, Share with me how it is you got involved in this type of industry. Both my sister and I were ballet dancers and teachers, me in Colorado and she in New York. And um, even though Pilates is not at all meant specifically for dancers, a lot of dancers find themselves gravitating towards it because it's so healing and balancing. And so I had been directing a dance studio here in Denver and decided I wanted to go to New York for, I don't know, maybe because things are going so well, you get to pick up and do something. So um, I moved to New York where my sister was and we started studying Pilates there because that was something I'd always wanted to do. And we were lucky that we found Romana Krizanovska, who was kind of like Joe's adopted daughter, Mr. Pilates' daughter. She wasn't his daughter, but and she taught for him and studied with him off and on her entire life. And then he died in the late 60s, but we were lucky enough to find Romana. And we took class from her three times a week for almost three years. That is amazing. Oh, you worked with the protege, really, of, of this person, which is great. I mean, here in America, it seems every year we're learning more and more that health is important, fitness, um, exercise. Um, is this something that you both have experienced, really, for the past 30 years almost, uh, people that are starting to take this journey? Is that something that um, you've witnessed yourself? Yes, I have. <laughs> Um, And it's a really thrilling job to have to accompany people on this pursuit. You know, teaching ballet, teaching an art form is very, it's beautiful and it's demanding, but it's not healthy. And so when both of us found Pilates, and even though we were strong, capable, you know, young dancers, we, um, we realized how much there was missing in our bodies. So when we, when we moved back to Colorado, we didn't necessarily think we were going to open a studio right away. And um, Amy was teaching at the university here, teaching ballet there. And um, at the time, Pilates still was very small. And it was hard to find people who built equipment. It was hard to find anything. People didn't know what it was. They called it pilates. And so, um, so when we first opened, it was a big education push for us to tell people what Pilates was all about. And Mr. Pilates himself was very clear that health was the, the primary goal, the, the um, gift of this work. And you see people change in all manners, um, you know, from something that really is a fixable thing like a torn shoulder to depression to head ac- you know, car accidents, head injuries, all kinds of things, including people who are using Pilates just to be better human beings. Let me ask you, Rachel, here in in Colorado, we have many choices when it comes to getting fit, exercising. Educate the viewers out there, why Pilates? Why this method of movement, um, therapeutic exercise, really? Um, Why do you think that is something that people tend to gravitate to? Not only dancers, but but everyone. Yes, everyone. I think because it, well, maybe basically because it so works, and people... (coughs) report that to their friends and to their family members and whatever. Uh, Obviously, in the last decade, you see even professional football players and basketball players using Pilates, Cirque du Soleil performers, but also you see people who've never done a stitch of exercise in their whole life and decide that, you know, I better now get started. And Pilates is so smart. It's so well uh, or integrated. It was all the brainchild of one person who built every single exercise throughout his decades of growing his thoughts and built every single piece of equipment. And so he knew exactly, 
he, I think maybe even beyond that, he had a vision of what the work should do ultimately for everybody, not just an exercise or even a piece of equipment, but like the whole vast realm of the Pilates method where, you know, there, there is a discrepancy in the Pilates world right now because the... There, he did not teach teachers, and nobody else really taught teachers purposefully for quite a while. And when Amy and I went, uh, we knew we were leaving New York, we came to Ramada begging to, you know, can we follow you around with a notebook and pick up the pearls? And and so we did, And but she didn't have her thoughts organized around, well, what would a teacher need to know? How would a teacher present this information versus this? Or in what order? Or any of that stuff. So it's only been since then, so say since the early 90s, that there were teacher training programs for Pilates teachers to learn the vastness. And there's like over 500 exercises on 12 different pieces of equipment so um, so you can get to back to your original question you can get to every part of the body parts that are so elusive or weak or tender and injured in so many different ways within the Pilates method that you can then build like from the bottom up or without you know without missing anything um, if you have a good teacher who knows what they're doing um, and, and then you get this, you grow younger. <laughs> I mean, I look around here, there's a lot of movement going on. I mean, he developed this method over a 60-year span. Um, we're talking about a German athlete. He was really a, a pioneer, if you will, when it comes to this, this type of thing. Is it important for you, because you did study under the really his protege, if you will, is it important for you to keep the integrity of that classic type of teaching um, alive and well today? It is absolutely important to us. We've based our almost 30 years of teaching clients and having a teacher training program, which Ramana helped us build um, early on in order to keep the, um, the integrity and the value, the understanding of the value of Mr. Pilates' vision and how he built equipment even, let alone how he built the exercises, how you modify them for certain bodies or make them more difficult or how you replace them on one piece of equipment at another piece of equipment because it makes it easier for the body to access that thing that's so difficult for them. So yeah, classical Pilates Mr. Pilates would never have used that term. To him, it was basically controlology. That was his term. Control of muscles, That's right? Right. And he, you know, I think that news, I think that the um, journalists who interviewed him believed that it would be better to call it Pilates after him because controlology, especially in the 40s, sounded a little too Germanic and too, you know. Sure. So, um, but his vision was like mind-body unification, and you are so thoughtful the whole time you're doing the work. Um, you create new pathways. One of my clients who's a scientist said that um, the year after Mr. Pilates died came out the very first medical study on synapses, that there were this thing called synapses in the brain. And Mr. Pilates said in his work that he, you build brain cells when you do this work. It was very important to him that people become their best. With a, a high level of awareness is going on while you're actually working out. Let's talk a little bit about the facility here. You have been training folks since um, 1990, yet this is a brand new facility. Great place, plenty of room, very welcoming. The first thing I think somebody who would walk in would notice that this doesn't look like equipment that you see down in the big box gyms at all. Um, share with me a little bit about this unique specialized equipment and, and why that is important to, uh, to the success of it all. Well, the, I guess there's an artistry that is part of the creation that, that Mr. Pilates was, I didn't say that very well, there, Mr. Pilates created um, the equipment and the exercises 
um, in various different pieces of equipment, different series of exercises as well as just individual exercises, all to intermesh. And when we learn Pilates, there's two basic big series, mat work, which uses no equipment except for a mat, and Pilates er, and Reformer, which you see behind you, which is his most complicated piece of equipment. And Romana was very clear that you you uh, progressed in your abilities and your coordination, your strength, your flexibility, all these things that Pilates gives you. You progress kind of simultaneously in mat and reformer, and then you added in the other things that would kind of spot work harder on certain areas. certain areas of your body that were falling that were harder to deal with, harder to find all that kind of thing. And in in his day, he really, his studio was a gym. You came, you had a few lessons, got started, especially if you were at all injured. He dealt with you quite um, intimately. But then you learned the work that everybody else learned, and there were no classes, there were no, you came, you did your work, and you went home. And so, um, now, because of economics, and um, maybe just leave it at that, there are classes that people can pay less for than a private lesson, for example. And so, um, so things like the chair that we're sitting on can become a whole class in of itself. This chair, by the way, Mr. Pilates made originally called the Wanda chair, and it was meant to be an at-home device, like a, the first Soloflex. You can do about 50 exercises on this thing, and then you would turn it upside down, unhook the springs, and it was an armchair in your house. Wow, that is amazing. <laughs> Sitting on a piece of equipment looked like a chair, but it, you can do quite a bit with that. Uh, let me ask you, this, the, the program itself, it's really a whole body approach. You can target certain things, but it's your complete body. We're talking about muscles, joints, alignment, balance quite a bit going on. I mean, it becomes kind of a mastery of your body. Um, that Do you think people find that challenging, yet at the same time uh, rewarding when they're able to experience that? I totally agree with what you just said. <laughs> it is... Um it is a mastery, but there's no competition. You're not competing with anyone else, nor are you with yourself. So you're growing at whatever you, we honor your body's need to make. I mean, there's so many things we don't know about the body, and how emotions lodge in muscles, how the fascia changes, you know, from soul to throat, how the organs are affected by your thoughts. I mean, there's so many things. So, um, so Pilates is this un ending um, journey for us to do what we should have been taught yes. from the get-go is to you know own, have an owner's manual of how to make the thing work to its best capabilities and stay healthy as long as possible and be as honored like in the whole system as our mind is um, especially maybe in the U.S. you know people don't pay attention to their bodies at all and they not till, not till their bodies start yelling out yeah. do we even do we even pay attention to that. Um, speaking of learning from the get go, what what age are you able to accommodate here? What age can people do this? From the youngest to the oldest, and because um, I imagine, I mean, it promotes circulation. It promotes movement, range of motion. Things that I notice as I'm getting older are getting less and less. So, is there a pretty wide gamut of ages that can benefit? Yes. The um, you know, one could say that the youngest children do Pilates already. If you watch babies growing up, you see them make movements that Mr. Pilates has put into his work, which are natural spinal movements and leg and arm movements. But, you know, they're already using that. Like my grandchild, he, he's like one muscle. He just moves in all directions and constantly, and um, and he's so alive. As I look around, I see, like I say, pieces of equipment. Many times get people get intimidated by equipment because how do you use this? What do you do? But really, I see a whole class going on for an hour on a simple mat. Um, basically, I would imagine there's new muscles that people have never even realized they had. Um, does it actually promote... Um, new muscle patterns, uh, teaching your teaching your body how to do something new. It does promote it does promote new muscle patterns, new all kinds of new things. Um, 
Mr. Pilates talked about in his writing that you have pet muscles that are the ones that are bigger usually on the outside of your body and we use them all the time, like our quads or our biceps or our pecs or something. And, and therefore, we go to them readily and they're there to help us immediately so we don't even know what we're missing until perhaps we injure something that was a smaller muscle closer to the joint, less uh, loud in our neurology. And so in Pilates, the, especially in particular with the springs use, the springs are like millimoment to millimoment change in, the, in everything, but in the muscularity of what is involved doing the exercise. And um, including the breathing is very specific for each half of every movement and you're building a full body experience you want in taught well pilates mr pilates in, envisioned that we would all return his book was his main book was called return to life that we would return to the capabilities that we were born to have like a like a cheeto walks through the savanna or a, you know a house cat or a, any animal doesn't think, okay, I've got to bend my knee this amount to put my foot down in front of me to, you know, like they just are natural about it. And, and, and their body rests when it's time to rest and they get flaccid and then their body springs to action when they need it. And he had a vision of man returning at least um, mind, body, spirit um, to a more nat to their natural gifted way. I mean, I like I like the idea of return to life because, like you, your example you gave was perfect, which was the baby. Mm -hmm. I mean, the baby's doing it naturally already, and basically he came up with a system that, ba that um, takes us back to that again, um, so we can understand how the body works. Uh, for a new person who's, who's trying out a class, they walk in, they've never done this before, where do they begin? Are we talking about a, a, a mat class, a chair class, a pole class, or it, basically um, the fancier machine behind us? Where do they start? Uh -huh. Well, uh, in general, when you want to start Pilates, the best thing is as if you want to research to see uh, who the best teacher is and how you do that would be similar to if you wanted to go to a ballet school for your child or you wanted to learn how to play the violin or even skiing you know sure. you have to you go there you look and see what you think along several different categories of excellence and you look at their his the teacher's history the studio's history all kinds of I could talk to you for hours about I that bet, part um, and that would be first and then then when you find someone who is well educated in teaching um, and has good equipment and that could be hours of conversation yeah, too um, then you uh, then you usually start with private lessons unless you're very healthy or a very capable body mind connection like someone says do this and it's very easy for you some people it is and other people it's not and so um, just different ways of being and so usually you start with a private or two or you start at a beginning class um, which is less expensive than private lessons and in terms of what kind of class Matt is usually the hardest because the, Mr. Pilates designed this work that um, the springs the, the difficulty level actually how do I want to say this you're not you don't add weight to make it harder, for example. You don't even necessarily add repetitions to make it harder. The way the springs work is that they you use them as extra muscles to um, aid you in doing something you can't do without them. So once you are enabled to do this thing, whether it's a bicep curl or a you know, headstand, you then are toning many more muscles than you might have without the support of the springs. So once the springs start to help you and you become more organized, then mat work is easier. But mat's kind of the hardest. That's hard to believe. Cheapest. I thought it would be the simplest. It sounds so simple, mat training. Um, I, I thought the reformer would be something that would be very tough to work with. But like you say, the key is finding somebody who's passionate about helping you. 
finding a teacher who is qualified, has the correct equipment um, to actually take you down that road. Um, for somebody who is starting out, can they just try out one class or do you have to jump in with the a, with a whole program? Absolutely, you can try out one class. In our studio, we often give away classes for people to test the waters for themselves. Um, and we have special deals for beginners. Um, and therefore, they can feel like, all right, uh, you know, it takes, it takes a while sometimes. Sometimes someone walks in and they've, yeah, they feel, oh my God, I've been waiting for this okay. forever. And sometimes it's like, well, this is a little more complicated or a little harder or a little too easy. You know, you get the whole range of experiences. So it takes a while for the wealth, I think, of the work to become evident. And people have these aha moments, both clients and uh, uh, students, trainees who are becoming teachers, have repeated aha moments where the amount of knowledge and capabilities that they've grown into provide them with this ability to get the next, like, they see the next peak in the mountain range and whether they want to go there or not. But they can see, oh, now this is available to me, whether it's picking up my grandchild without low back pain or it's, um, you know, climbing Mount Everest. It's, it's that vast. As we said before, um, you moved from Colorado, went to New York. You were able to really study under um, someone who firsthand dealt with this pioneer of this, of this great system. Not everyone can go to New York to actually find somebody who can teach them. You've made it easy. You've made it easy. You, you actually have utilized technology, online training. Um, people can learn this anywhere and come in. Is that important for you um, as far as passing along that knowledge and making sure that um, the next generation understands? Yes, it's, ab it's our mission to do that. And um, it, I, I would have said for two decades, there's no way you could learn Pilates in a teacher training program or as a, a practitioner online. And I still agree with that. But, <laughs> but about six years ago, we filmed all of our lectures and we created a, t like a structure to our training program such that we made use of a lot of our graduates. So we have graduates worldwide, over a thousand. And um, now, we have in the studio right now, as a matter of fact, two, um, two Russian women who, yeah, one who had been living in Dubai and one who'd been living in D.C., you know, coming to study. A, a young woman's here from France. So they still do come to us, but also they can study in their own countries with a graduate of ours who advises them, observes them teaching, gives them access to their studio to practice teach, all that, all the... Um, aspects of a teacher training program can be done more in their home base than they can come here to the source um, where it's just so, it's like such a rich soup here with all of us and um, we learn constantly from each other. Our, our way of teaching is learning. Um, th so they can come here for a visit or to take their final exams and then, um, and it's working amazingly successfully it's I know it's a great <laughs> that's got to be exciting for you I mean quite honestly like we said um, at the beginning people are learning to take their their body <clears throat> and understand what it means um, health should be at the, at the top of the list and people are understanding that I think is it exciting for you when you see them take this journey transform their health get back to health is that is that rewarding for you? It's so rewarding. It's you know you don't make a lot of money as a Pilates teacher, even as an owner of a business um, or two businesses. But um, but it's so phenomenally gratifying to help people um, move towards being healthier, being happier. And then we think of it as Mr. Pilates did. I mean, in 1947, he wrote a letter to his clients talking about, you know, if we don't do something now, 
<laughs> the world's going to be in a terrible place. And obviously, we could still have that letter out. We do have the letter out, actually, here in the studio. And, um, you know, we feel like this is our way of trying to make the world a better place, making, giving humans um, the capability, the, the avenue to make themselves better, stronger, more flexible in their bodies and minds, smarter, more at ease, all kinds of wonderful things that we all want. Um, Pilates is kind of that exercise or that fitness system that, that produces that, what it promises. It is amazing that what his vision was originally is so relevant today. And it continues to be relevant. Like I said before, I think the back to life really is perfect. Everything you're, you're explaining to us is about getting back to understanding our bodies. And by doing so, our overall health and overall really um, view of the world has to be a, a much better place. Yes, that we can, we can only work towards that vision. <laughs> And that's what you're doing. That is fantastic. Viewers, let's take a look at the bottom of the screen right there. What you're going to see is their website. On the website, first of all, take a look at the classes. Um, they've got a complete calendar right there. Um, you name it, be it a chair class, a mat class. Um, they're going to help you through this. If you've never done this before, come on in, talk to the team. They have a beautiful facility. It's welcoming. It's warm. But yet, at the, at the end of the day, this is about people. This is about people helping people. We're talking about team um, teachers that are passionate about keeping alive the original um, classic Pilates, if you will, that was taught by a, a master um, over 60 years to developing a, a system. Once again, that is the Pilates Center located right here in Boulder, Colorado since 1990. This is Gary Atensi with CNTV. And if you don't know, now you know.